Our read aloud selection today is How Martha Saved Her Parents from Green Beans by David La Rochelle, illustrated by Mark Fearing. We're growing green beans this year at our farm, so I had hoots of laughter over this take no prisoners tale of the revolt of the ultimate green vegetable, the green bean. If you're a garden grower with beans, you may never look at them again without breaking up. I know I never will. Young readers in droves may identify with young Martha and her family who every Tuesday evening have green beans for dinner. It's the same old, same old at their house with no deviation. Martha crouches down in her seat and stares at the grainy green vegetables and rebels, despite the protestations of her mother's, green beans are good for you, and her father's, green beans make you big and strong. Her parents are selling, but dear sweet Martha is not buying the pitch from her patient parents. And now the read aloud selection for today. How Martha Saved Her Parents from Green Beans. Every Tuesday evening, Martha's family had green beans for dinner. Every Tuesday night, Martha was left alone at the table, staring at a plate of green beans that she wouldn't eat. Green beans are good for you, said her mother. Green beans will make you big and strong, said her father. They are both wrong, thought Martha. Green beans are bad, very bad. But even Martha did not know how bad green beans could be, not until the day that a gang of mean green beans swaggered into town. These beans had black beady eyes and long curly mustaches. They were tall cowboy hats and sharp pointy boots. They chased old ladies up and down the street. They threw rotten tomatoes at the teachers. They stormed into restaurants and tossed the cooks into garbage cans. Anyone who had ever said, eat your green beans, was in big, big trouble. Martha's parents were reading in the den when the beans barged into the house. The bad beans jumped on top of the furniture. They tied her parents with long leafy vines. They whooped and hollered and made rude noises. Martha was in the kitchen staring at a plate of cold beans. When she heard the ruckus, she ran into the den. It was empty. The front door was open and a note was tacked to the wall. We have taken your parents. Signed, the beans. No more parents meant no more nagging to clean up your room. No more parents meant no more going to bed when she wasn't sleepy. And no more parents meant no more green beans for dinner, ever. Hooray, shouted Martha. She threw her plate of cold green beans right out of the window. And then she grabbed a box of cookies and settled on the couch to watch her favorite movies long past her bedtime. Martha was happy, but not really. She missed her parents and wanted them back. By morning, she knew what she had to do. She marched out of the house and followed a trail of leaves that led her to a cave. Outside the cave, she saw her mother and father tied to a rock. They were surrounded by hundreds of green beans laughing and dancing and singing off key. Give me back my parents, shouted Martha. The beans did not even look at her. Untie them now, right now. The beans only snickered. Let my parents go or I'll... Or you or what, said the beans. Or I will eat you, said Martha. The air grew cold, the singing and the dancing stopped. The leader of the bean stepped forward and spat on the ground. You'll not eat us, he said with an evil sneer. You have never eaten a green bean in your life. He took a step closer to Martha, then another and another, and with every step the bean seemed to grow larger. He climbed onto a rock and looked Martha in the eyes. You are too much of a coward 
to eat a green bean. Martha's legs felt like melting butter. She wanted to run home and hide beneath her bed, but she pinched her nose, opened her mouth, and swallowed that bean in one big gulp. The other beans gasped. <gasps> Martha ate those beans, too. And when she untied her parents, they hugged and kissed her and told her that she was very brave. From that day on, Martha's family never had green beans for dinner again. Instead, they had broccoli or corn on the cob or a nice leafy salad. Everyone knows that there is nothing bad about a nice leafy salad. Story. Listen.